This is Bernardo Rios, and he was finally able to cure his vitiligo after 30 years of being diagnosed with it. So in this video, we're going to be going through some of the steps Bernardo took in order to achieve this magnificent result. I'm also going to be talking about one of the most frequently asked questions on my channel, and that is, Hey Freddy, you said on your recent video on vitiligo that ruxolitinib is the most effective treatment for vitiligo. So if so, why do we keep seeing these bad results on forums on the internet like the Vitiligo subreddit? I'm going to be answering that question and giving you some of the tips and tricks you can use to increase your chances into getting some of these results from Roxalitinib. And lastly, I'm going to talk about the price of Roxalitinib or Absolura in India and some of the places you can find it in. So if you're not subscribed yet to the channel, please do. Also click on that notification bell to keep yourself updated on any news on Vitiligo and future maybe cures for Vitiligo. I've talked on recent videos about the impact, the psychological impact Vitiligo can have on individuals that get affected with it. And surprisingly, the incidence of Vitiligo is not low in any way, shape or form. I mean, the global incidence of Vitiligo is about 1%. That may be slightly higher in places like India, China, uh, Uzbekistan, Africa. So generally, dark-skinned people are at more risk than light-skinned people to get in Vitiligo. On top of that, dark-skinned people are are more psychologically impacted because vitiligo creates more contrast between the healthy skin and the affected skin so that would make it even more obvious in dark-skinned people but thankfully we've got a good arsenal of treatments in the face of vitiligo like phototherapy glucocorticoids creams for repigmentation and most recently the, the cream that got FDA approved the breaking news ruxolitinib or absolura and I made a video discussing Absolura and the outcomes in the study that led to the FDA approval. But we're gonna get through those results again in this video. But first, we need to go through a little reminder about how vitiligo works in the first place. What's its mechanism and what's the pathogenesis that lies behind vitiligo. And this is important for understanding the mechanism of how the treatment works. and for what category of patients the treatment will work. So vitiligo is believed to be caused by two possible mechanisms. The first is neurotoxicity and the second is autoimmunity. The neurotoxic theory is the one responsible for causing segmental vitiligo. I'm not gonna be talking about that one. I made a whole video discussing the differences between segmental and non-segmental vitiligo how you can differentiate which one you have or maybe which one your child has. But what you need to know is that segmental vitiligo cannot be treated with Absolura or Roxalitinib. Roxalitinib is an immunosuppressant cream. It suppresses the immune system and it has nothing to do with the pathogenesis of segmental vitiligo. So it's not efficient in any way, shape or form for people who have segmental vitiligo. Now, non-segmental vitiligo is actually caused by what's known as the autoimmune theory. What's happening is the immune system or the immune cells, the lymphocytes, attack the melanocytes. You probably know, but the melanocytes are the body cells that create melanin. Melanin is what gives our skin its color. I myself have a dark skin, so my melanocytes on my skin create more melanin than what a European person melanocytes will create. So. Again, what happens is that the T lymphocytes attack melanocytes, that leads to the destruction of those cells, the destruction of melanocytes, and less melanin is created, therefore less pigment is appearing on your skin, which creates the appearance of these macules or also known as white patches or depigmented patches on the skin. I'm not gonna be going through the differences of the localization of these patches and the patterns these patches take and the evolution of these patches between non-segmental and segmental vitiligo. I made a whole video about it. Go check it out if you're interested. So if you understood what goes wrong in non-segmental vitiligo, it will be easier for you to understand the mechanism of ruxolitinib. Ruxolitinib suppresses the immune system. It's what's called as a JAK pathway inhibitor. JAK pathway is just a pathway that our cells use 
to activate the inflammatory response created by the immune system. What happens is cytokines bind to the extracellular portion of the JAK pathway and that actually leads to a cascade of events that in the end leads to the expression of the inflammatory genes which means the creation of inflammatory proteins, which basically means inflammation. You don't really have to understand all of that. You just need to understand that the activation of the JAK pathway leads to inflammation. So if we inhibit the JAK pathway, like in what happens in roxiridinib, a JAK pathway inhibitor, we basically inhibit the immune response. And just a glimpse on the efficacy of roxiridinib, at week 52 of the study, meaning after one year of using roxilatinib, 30% of the participants achieved 90% repigmentation in their face, meaning 90% of the vitiligo or depigmented patches on their face disappeared after one year of using roxilatinib. Again, all of the patients that participated in this study that led to the FDA approval of roxilatinib had non-segmental vitiligo. I cannot stress this enough. Roxilatinib can be used only on non-segmental vitiligo. I've got a lot of questions on so my channel, particularly about this topic, and I can't stress it enough. Roxilatinib only for non-segmental vitiligo because it suppresses the immune system, which has nothing to do with the pathogenesis of segmental vitiligo. So Bernardo Rios, the man I talked about in the beginning of the video, is a 41-year-old man who's been living with vitiligo for over 30 years. In his own words, it was traumatizing growing up with vitiligo. Bernardo's story goes back actually to 2020 because he was one of the participants that joined the clinical trial for Absilura. And he said that he first started to see positive results after four months and more noticeable results in one year, meaning 52 weeks. And this brings me to the second point that I wanted to emphasize and talk about in this video. And that is, why do we keep seeing these bad results on the internet or the Vitiligo subreddit for people using Absilura? Isn't it so efficacious and uh, effective in reducing the depigmentation? Well, look at this data. At week 24, half of the participants in the study witnessed 50% repigmentation in their face. And at week 52, half of the participants witnessed 75 repigmentation in their face. If this data shows you anything, is that ruxilitinib efficacy is proportional to the duration of using the cream. So I'm seeing these patients sharing their results after three months or four months or five months maybe for using ruxilitinib and they're expecting full repigmentation on the macules of vitiligo. While this is not uh, coherent with what we found in the studies that led to the FDA approval. So if you're using ruxilitinib, please keep using it until you at least reach the 52 weeks mark. And then you can make an assessment in terms of if you're satisfied by the treatment or not. And the last topic I wanted to talk about in this video is the price and the places where you can find Absilura in India. Because that's again, one of the most frequent questions that I've been asked since publishing that video. So I made a little bit of research. Unfortunately, I cannot speak Hindu, but I tried making some research and I found Absilura being sold in India for about 200 bucks, $250 but I'm not going to be sharing the website where I found Absolura being sold because in the process of making the video, I found bad reviews about that particular site. So maybe it's not that legitimate or maybe it's a scam. And of course, I'm not going to harm my viewers in any way, shape or form. So if you're from India and if you're watching the video and maybe know of a place where you can secure uh, Absolura or maybe you acquired it in some way, of course, legal way, please share in the comment section so maybe other viewers from India will benefit from your comment. Again guys, ruxilitinib is a dangerous drug. You should only be taking it after consulting with your dermatologist and getting a prescription for it. In fact, your dermatologist will be giving you some tests you need to do before getting prescribed with this drug because again, it suppresses the immune system. And in the two trials that led to the FDA approval, we noticed some grade four side effects. So your dermatologist will be closely monitoring you in the duration of taking this cream. 
And that pretty much covers what I wanted to speak about on this video. I just wanted to share this guy's story. I mean, Berardo's story is so impressive and touching. This guy have been suffering from vitiligo for about 30 years and how scientists have finally been able to achieve this breakthrough puts a smile on my face. If you didn't know about it, actually roxilinib is already a drug for other conditions like myelofibrosis, but it's never been re in research for vitiligo. And again, seeing the human species slowly advance and solve problems and solve diseases that we never thought before that we'd be able to solve um, makes my heart jump of happiness, truly. And to be a part of it and to share with you guys some of these stories is truly a huge privilege. So if you do have Veriligo, please don't stress it out. Lots of research, lots of new data is coming through the way. Uh, a lot of smart people are working on such problems like Veriligo. So don't worry about it and try to enjoy your life as much as possible. So with that being said, like the video if you found it informative, subscribe to the channel, and as always, stay safe.